The optimal evening routine to build muscle, burn body fat, and feel energized is the one that ensures proper sleep. Almost nothing will improve your progress, like getting better sleep. And on the flip side, almost nothing will crush your progress, like poor sleep. So when you're organizing your evening and you're thinking, hey, I want to get in better shape, it's all about sleep and sleep quality. That's the most important thing. Is there a New York Times bestseller waiting to happen right now? <laughs> I mean, I feel like there's at least a thousand books on morning routines. Every other person's made a book on the... the yeah, where's the nightly routine? Uh, and that's actually, what's that's a great point. Is there anything? What's more important, evening or morning evening. routine? That's why I think By it's far. so. That's why it's so interesting to me because I there's know. so much written about winning the it's morning. Tech and people, all the rich people do the five five o'clock, five a.m. Yeah, routine, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, like so, yeah. it's I go like outside a must. for ten minutes naked, let the sun yeah. hit my body, then I come inside, drink coffee. But, but there's no, you know what's up. interesting about that too? Like you're considered lazy if you sleep in when you're getting uh, sleep, but if you go to bed early, you're not considered lazy. You're getting the same amount of sleep. Ooh, that's. Deep thinking right Yeah, that there. is. Boom. That's a good one. Think about um, that. Chew on so, that for a bit. So when you're looking at like evening routines, and it, especially in the context of progress, uh, fitness progress, right? You're like, okay, I want to I want to amplify my body's ability to burn fat. Uh, so what helps with that? Uh, faster metabolism, more balanced hormones. Uh, I want to optimize my body's ability to build muscle. Uh, you know, same thing. I'm looking to optimize my hormones, reduce inflammation, improve my body's ability to adapt, make my body feel like it can build muscle. It's not in a super stressed state. I want to recover. Of course, feeling energized. I think everybody knows uh, poor sleep will do the opposite of that. It really revolves around sleep. It really revolves around what's going to ensure the best sleep for you. And so what does that look like? Generally, it looks like not eating three hours before bed, not drinking, a couple hours, you know, an hour before, two hours before turning off electronics, having a nice, quiet, cool place to sleep and, and prioritizing it, uh, going to bed at the same time every night, waking up at the same time every day. So you don't give yourself this interesting jet lag everybody does uh, every single weekend versus what's so common. It's so common for people to simply fall asleep from exhaustion. Like they'll, they'll be on their phone until they can't stay awake any longer or they'll watch their TV and to the point where. Do you guys know people like this where the only way they can sleep is with the TV on? Yeah. yeah. Literally train I themselves. mean, the, the TVs, they they rolled them out after that with the, the way you could like have it set for 30 minutes to an hour. Turn so off it itself. turns off itself. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I know a lot of people like my um, roommate in college was like that. And I had to just, I would always just turn it off and he'd get pissed off. But Who, you know. Who's the best and the worst of us? For what? For this. For a, a nightly routine. Nightly routine? Yeah, I think you're the best. I have, yeah, for sure. I've seen your masks and yeah, yeah, yeah Justin's yeah. getting pretty good. Justin's got a lot of devices and stuff too. Yeah, but I would say me, uh, you and Doug will stretch it out. Doug will typically go to bed. Yeah, but I also think that Justin's you. more likely to screw it up with like having a drink. Ooh. Yeah. So he, you're you're just. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was this wow. an intervention? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah let's you let's all talk. We brought you. We brought you here today to tell you this. Well, in fact, let's take it left. No, I. It, my, comfortable. Mine saying. is like that mainly because of all the stuff I have to do in the morning and with the little. If I don't, I'm screwed. And I work out first thing in the morning. Yeah. What's interesting is one of the benefits. In fact, you brought this up on a past episode. I thought that was such a good a good point. One of the values or benefits of working out first thing in the morning or in the day is that if you if you value your workouts, you tend to also have to value the night before to ensure that you can actually work out. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, I'm screwed. Right. If I don't do that and I wake up and then I try to go to the gym, uh, it's just going to be a terrible workout. So it's like I have to go to bed by this time. I want to ensure that it's good sleep so that I can wake up at this time and, and get the workout going. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it's true. Like, um, even just eating a bit too late for me is, is completely detrimental to sleep. So I, cause you know, just in terms of digestion and just like overall, uh, it'll wake me up in the middle of the night if, if I'm likely to eat after seven o'clock. And so it's like considering that. And then yes, alcohol is another contributor that's terrible for sleep. Yeah. So if you factor all those things in and really are intentional about like setting yourself up for success, um, you, you, you pay such a, a better price. Yeah. There's a couple that are less known. Like, I think a lot of people know like, okay, no electronics, um, you know, maybe not eat and drink, you know, dr drink water or, any, or fluids too close to bed. So you don't have to wake up to use the restroom. Um, you know, cool room, going to bed and waking up at the same time uh, every day now is becoming more understood. But there's a couple out there that people don't 
um, you know, necessarily consider when it comes to sleep. Uh, one of them is, you know, if you have a nutrient deficiency, a common one like magnesium, that can be a, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. that can make a huge difference. Huge. Uh, yeah. Oftentimes people, they, they have kind of this anxious, uh, restless feeling when they're trying to sleep, like they'll wake up throughout the night many times. It could be a deficiency. And then here's another one. And this is just a great gauge of exercise uh, intensity, volume, and whether or not it's appropriate for you. If you're exercising properly, if it's the right amount of intensity and volume for your body, your sleep will typically improve. If it's not the right amount, especially if it's too much, you'll get poor sleep. Insomnia is one of the number one uh, symptoms of overtraining. So if you're a fitness fanatic and you do everything like, because we'll get callers like this all the time. I do everything uh -huh. right. I work out. I eat right. Uh, I take all the supplements before bed. I do the sleep routine, but I can't get better sleep. You're, you're probably overtrained. They need to scale the volume back, and then all of a sudden, uh, they're, they're sleeping like a baby. I, you know, Mike Matthews was the one that actually brought that to my attention. Um, I knew about it, but I didn't realize it was so common until him and I were talking. It might have been on one of his podcasts, and he said that he struggled with like on and off insomnia for a long time. Couldn't figure out what it was. The guy's very smart. He's one of the smartest people I know. And he did everything, right? Tested his nutrients, did all the sleep routine, did all the perfect bed, the whole deal. And then he came to the realization, I think maybe I'm just doing too much of my workouts. Cut his volume down by a third. And he mm. goes, bro, he goes within a day. And he got magical sleep. Within, yeah, a few days. He goes, like, I got, all of a sudden got good sleep. I didn't realize that it was just, mm. I was pushing the limit too hard. And, and you know, Justin, you played at very high level in sports. It's hard to sleep when you're training at that intensity, that level. It's probably one of the more difficult things to do. Very, very. Even hard. though you're exhausted. Yeah. Well, that's what you. Th that's what your metric is. Is like uh, if I can, if I can work so hard that I get so exhausted, I'm more likely to just like hit the pillow and and knock myself out. And that was like considered good sleep for me. But yeah, I'm sure I was running, you know, in the red for a long time. Yeah. Th another sign too is if you do get what you think is supposed to be adequate. So you're like, okay, I go to bed. I think I sleep for eight hours, but I feel like I need a nap every day. You know, that's me. Like that can happen to me. Like, oh my God, I think I need a nap almost every single day, even though I'm prioritizing my sleep. I'm probably still doing too much. <clears throat> it probably means that I'm doing too much. Get you off a clip. Gets, gets yeah. me emotional. Another yeah. <laughs> no, still, yeah. Are you are you a big uh, are you a big napper right now? Do you go home and nap? I, I don't, but on the weekend uh, I will typically, and I could if I, <laughs> I could nap at any moment. Yeah. Did you see but, Jerry's text? Uh, she saw that, like an article came out said something about like increasing your IQ or whatever oh, for yeah. people to do trying like, to get pods naps. here. Yeah, I was like, okay. no, Jerry, yeah. we're not doing pods. <laughs> I would love studio. that. I would be like my sounds amazing, my dream but life. unproductive. Oh, yeah, my dream life. Life literally would be a nap after my workout every single time. I yeah. lived that life for a little while. Did you? Oh, when you were competing? That would be yeah, cool. yeah. And, and yeah, during that time too. So I've, I've been able to do that before where I train, eat, sleep type of deal. I mean, that's why too, I think that uh, when you hear, I hear people that like really like they're they're chasing the, the com competitive physique and stuff. It's like, boy, that is, uh, that is special when you have somebody who works like a full-time job, has like, and may, God, heaven forbid, they have a like family and kids. Yeah. And then on top of that, they try and compete like that. That sport was so demanding with stuff like that, with prioritizing naps and food and everything. Like, how do you do anything else? Like, it blows my mind, people that actually can manage that in addition to that. And you have to be redlining all yeah, the time if you do. I remember, the other part of Oh, I, was, I remember talking to, I forget which, you know, high level bodybuilder about this, but he was on like growth hormone and like a lot of it to the point where it was like, he was comparing it to almost being like a toddler where it's like he, he had to get so much sleep. Oh, and that's, like, that was, I know who you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. but like. It was someone we know. Who yeah. Was and I'm not going to say his name, but. And yeah. then gain like 80 pounds of muscle. Yeah. He so. just got <laughs> huge. I'm like, how the heck, you yeah. know? And so he was breaking it down and just like talking about how, all about. these growth spurts. Yeah, Strong power lifter, so and got massive. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, 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 but yeah, 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 I just yeah. was. It was kind of funny to me though that uh, you know he was getting all these naps in, and like that was his whole day was devoted to like that was triggered growth. by his high levels of growth hormone that he was taking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The other thing too to, to that a lot of people don't realize is that lack of sleep subtly um, until it gets really bad um, changes your behaviors. It changes your desires. Uh, it makes you more sensitive to negative emotion, uh, less sensitive to positive, and it changes the way that you crave food. The You'll craving crave one is more. wild. The craving That one's one... established, by the way. The studies on that are established, for yes. sure. You will crave more palatable food 
if you lack sleep. This that's another reason why I think like giving that advice. I know it's boring advice, right? I know the listeners listening, and it's like, of course we know sleep, but it's such a powerful one. Not just because of all the things you're talking about, but because one of the biggest challenges when you get a client and you're trying to get them healthier, uh, changing behaviors around food is one of the one of the biggest mm-hmm. obstacles. And it, and a lot of times, why that's such a huge obstacle is it's already tough to say no to these super palatable foods, but it's even tougher when that person's sleep is crushed and then the cravings are ravenous. Yeah, like the, it, and everyone's been there before, right? You've had there's a difference between like, oh, I kind of feel like some popcorn with this movie, yeah. or it sounds like something I want to do, yeah. versus like, versus oh my driven. god, I yeah. want that so bad. Nothing else sounds good but that crap, right? Like. A lot of times that's because someone's sleep is so bad and solving that eliminates or at least tamps it way down. It makes it easier to make those decisions. You know, you're ta- it's so funny you're talking about craving. You just made me realize or think about something. So cravings can also be triggered by uh, context or environment. Hmm. So you mentioned popcorn, right? Mm-hmm. You go to the movies. People tend to not even think about popcorn until they go to the movies. Yeah. I have a weird one for myself. When I do any, when I go to any kind of an event with lots of like anywhere where I'm going to go to like the SAP, you know, uh, candy area, or I go, I went to the Oakland arena and watch, you know, went to Brandon Lake, Mm -hmm. Phil Wickham concert, whatever. So Jessica and I have done several events and every time you go to them, especially around here, walking up to like SAP, there's always vendors selling hot dogs wrapped in bacon. Hot nuts. Oh. No, what? I don't know. <laughs> I've never seen hot nuts. Hot dogs wrapped in we bacon. We had it. Remember when we were in London? It was oh, like we did. The, yeah, that was good. I want a hot dog wrapped, wrapped in slip. bacon. Anyways. Where do you get that? You never seen them outside when you're walking in? There's there's dudes, people cooking hot dogs, and they'll they're wrapped in bacon, and yeah. they'll have like yeah. on the side they'll have like peppers and onions and they have yeah. little carts set up. Yeah. Little okay, carts. Yeah, I mean, I go to games and concerts all the yeah. time out of us. Never. And, and there's always the hot dog guy, and he's got and they got the, all the onions and. But I've never seen a few concerts. With but that. I've never seen them wrapped in bacon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I've yeah seen Doug's it. seen it. Yeah. I've seen it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I had time. I had one a while ago, and now whenever I go to these these events, I look for them. <laughs> I mean, I'm Where on the hunt it? now. I've never seen one of those. They're so good and yeah. bad at the same time. I feel so, so bad. Yeah, I feel like physically not good. I mean, that's the funny thing about those too. Where did I just, I just had a hot dog. I don't know where I was at, what, what hmm. we were doing, where I where that's I. That's got to be the ultimate terrible process. It is. And it, every corn, time. Corn dog is Does it dream. matter? Like, I'm, I'm, that's what it was. It was corn dog. I was at Happy Hollow. I was like, where did oh, I just have like You a have hot to have dog. a corn dog if you're at like some amusement park. Yes, yeah, so I was at an amusement park. I literally on the way there, I just talk about those things. And I remember telling Max, oh, we'll have a corn dog, right? And he's like, corn dog even know what it is and uh, i had them and it was so good going down and just uh, miserable the rest yes, of the day yeah. just feel terrible just my gut messed up yeah, do you know where the best corn the best uh this fit, everyone this is a fitness and health podcast by the way uh yeah. the best corn dog i've ever had uh santa, santa cruz, cruz. Santa boardwalk cruz. yeah yes what is that they're amazing i don't know they just are they known they for have that it, they have it down whatever the batter and the fryer that it's they mixed with in. beach sand that's why <laughs> No, no. <laughs> it's the combination it's so of, of the crunchy the salty fried air, hot dog dude, and then salty this, and yeah. salty and sand know. in your in your hot dog. No, it's so good. You get the so taffy good. there too. It's so good. Yeah, they yeah. used to have that place called Hot Dog on a Stick too in the mall. I don't have that anymore. Remember mm-hmm. they used to wear the weird. It shorts doesn't and, exist anymore. And I haven't seen one. Uh, no, I haven't uh, seen one in a long yeah. time. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, I have a free guide that teaches you how to lose fat in three steps. Just three steps that will burn the most amount of body fat and help keep it off. This guide is totally free. We're giving it to everybody right now. If you want it, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Anyway, we're, we're talking about hot dogs. There's protein in hot dogs, which brings me to a point that I wanted to bring up. Oh, <laughs> oh good. I just There was a study that just came out. Max Lugavier posted about it. I love Max. This guy, he's, he's one of my favorite people, super smart, and he's always- Isn't Max coming in this week? He is. We'll, we'll mm-hmm. see him Friday. Yeah. Um, so a new study of over 2,600 people. So it's a big study. Yeah. They found that protein intake, particularly from animal sources, was linked to a slower rate of atrophy of the hippocampus in people as they age. This is the brain's memory center. So people who ate the most protein, especially animal sources of protein, had essentially a healthier hippocampus in the brain. Oh, interesting. Huh. And, and you know, this goes along with the theory of, why, of, of the fact why we have big brains in the first place. And how that wouldn't have right. been possible had we not learned how to Bruising become apex plants. predators yeah. and hunt animals and cook them and eat them. It's the bioavailability and the amino acid profile is is probably 
uh, what it is. And the animal sources of protein, they are superior to plant sources unless you eat a lot of protein. Then it really doesn't matter. But well, you don't. Most people don't eat enough protein to meet that. And we got protein. bigger too, right? Like as a result of kind of changing the diet in that direction. I mean, you've heard other theories about like how we got more intelligent and I'm sure you've heard like the stoned ape theory yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Like, stoned ape? Never yeah. Heard that? So that? the stoned ape theory it, uh -uh. It, that we were like a bunch of, you know, cave psilocybin, like, you know, because of, um, uh, I guess uh, it's like cow patties. Like they grow. It grows on poop. It's so, yeah. So apparently like, because, they started to eat these and then have these like like existential kind of moments where they're like reflecting and, and realizing <laughs> that you know there's more like it, it sort of like expanded their their thought process uh, and became like we, we grew our brains grew as a result of that and so that, that's like a speculated theory yeah like it, it led to I mean anyone who's been on psilocybin could probably get behind that I mean that's... yes but I, here, you know why <laughs> I, mean, I disagree with yeah. that I disagree with that because. You have to have a baseline to to be able to conceptualize what is go that expansion is, is is happening. Like if I give psilocybin to a dog or a monkey, I don't think they're thinking about the future, the past, what happens after we die, any of that stuff. I think they're just in the moment and and don't know what's going they're on. Disoriented. I yeah. think humans already had that, and then you eat psychedelics, and I then mean, you can I mean, make sense of this I mean, weirdness of that's I happening. That too, yeah. I don't think it led to art and, and religion and all that stuff. <laughs> Because people ate mushrooms. Well, doesn't uh, doesn't that fly in the face of your evolution theory of evolving from apes, though? Then I, that my theory. I'm yeah. Not a, well, I mean, <laughs> I mean that, and generally out of us who's talked on the podcast, like that's no. Kind of like I the, my evolution. You know, I think behaviors and culture evolves. I, that makes a lot of sense to me for sure. But again, it's uh, we didn't evolve from apes. It's completely different. We know this. Two separate branches on the tree. Um, uh, human history only goes back so far because of, we recorded, but we do evolve our ideas. We know that. Yeah. yeah. And you know, our, and, and yeah, concepts, yeah. but yeah. It's, so back to what I was saying with the protein, I mean, the, it's connected with longevity as people get older, muscle mass, we know this and now brain health. Mm -hmm. Now there's a large study that shows brain health. You know, when I, when I used to train clients, one way I used to help my clients get more protein, cause it's hard to do. We've said this so many times on the show, hitting what we consider, what is considered in the literature, high protein, which would be about point, let's say, I'll, I'll average it out, 0.7 grams of protein per pound of, let's say, target body weight. Okay, so we always go one to one just to even it out. But that's a lot of protein for most people. That would be like a 150-pound woman trying to eat 130 grams uh, or 120 grams of protein, which is a lot uh, for someone like that, or 200-pound man, 170 grams or something like that. That's a lot of protein. It's hard to, it's hard to get. One of the ways I would help my clients do that is I would always push them towards high protein snacks. So in the middle of the day when they wanted to get a snack or whatever, the go-to for me back then for my clients was jerky. Yeah. It was always jerky. Yeah. Because it was an easy 10, 15, 20 grams of protein. It's palatable too. It's, it's tasty. Like, yeah, it's tasty. It's easy to it's eat. It's got a long shelf life. Every gas station has it. Every gas station <laughs> has it. Uh, yeah, it's hard to find really good. I know people get weird about quality. Mm -hmm. um, you know, now there's really high quality ones like Paleo Valley, who we work with. Their meat sticks. I just had a couple of them. Really good. They're not dry. It's grass They're fed. The best. Yeah. It's high quality protein. I mean, if you remember, that's how we how we started working with them. I don't know how many years it's been now since we've been working with them, and they got a lot of great products. Don't get me wrong, and I know you. Uh, I, and I actually use their protein powder a lot now, also. But their beef sticks is what got us. Yeah, because yeah. I have That's a tried crown jewel. It's so there's good. without throwing shade on the other, you know, healthy protein uh, or jerkies out there. But oh, it, a it's lot of way them are, better. Blech. They have their their jerky sticks are amazing. Yes, yes, are and amazing. it's high quality. It's grass fed. It's it's not dry. You know, it's high and, and it's got long shelf life. It's packaged. Yeah, so you could take it with you. Even anywhere. bears love them. Are you? Oh, oh my yeah. god! Remember that? remember that? You guys remember that? It's been did, a long, what it's did been the a long bear? Time, right? What they did ate our entire stash? So yeah. people might not know the story. We have a a, a place uh, in the mountains. The company does, and a bear broke in years ago. How long ago did that happen? Probably four years ago. Is it oh, at least ago? that. At least yeah. four or five a years A bear ago. broke in uh -huh. when we weren't there, left a big ass paw uh, yeah, print. Busted open the door. Busted yeah. open the door and ate the Paleo Valley I was the one, and supplements. I was the one that pulled up on it. And I remember pulling up in the driveway. And uh, first of all, I freaked out because our breezeway door was open, wide open. And I don't think Now, when did you know it was a bear and not an intruder? Uh, when I got right to the doorway, so 
So as soon as I got to the doorway, there was a jar of peanut butter that had been opened and just licked clean. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, that's, not a, like, that's not a burglar. Uh, oh, yeah. So, so yeah, <laughs> right away, you're right. I, I thought like, oh, my God, someone broke into our house. I was kind of worried about that. And then as I'm walking up, I see like like stuff, wrappers and things on the floor. And right there is a peanut butter jar. And I mean, it was like I picked it up. And it was like licked clean. I mean, like, licked. like you just washed. Like it. I've never seen the bottom of a peanut butter jar like that. Like yeah. you, when you get, finish a peanut butter, you're, you're oh, it's pretty much done. You throw yeah. it away. Like you don't get to. I mean, at least I don't like scrape every last, yeah. like oh, every that's, last that's drop. I'm like, yeah. I don't even yeah. if I've ever seen a, does that. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a clear one of these before. You know, I want to so, know how it got the lid off. Yeah, the, I mean, it's oh, they're dead. Yeah. Yeah. They're, you should have seen the other stuff. They can he open had doors. He had open. There was paw twists. prints on uh, the 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 freezer door and closed. The oven open. <laughs> I like closed. how he closed them too. Yes, they weren't all they weren't it. all left wide open. Yeah. Like some things were wide open. Like the the cabinets hey, were wide open. <laughs> the door to the pantry was wide open. But there was like I said, like the oven had been. You could tell it had been grabbed and l opened, and then the refrigerator same thing grabbed and opened and and closed. So yeah, no, they they definitely are. are and they pretty... eat what they eat the bar. They eat the so the then, Valley okay. So sick. if here's the the way the Bars. house works is we have the breezeway. You guys know, but this is for the audience, right? So the breezeway uh, connects to the laundry room. The laundry room connects to the kitchen, and. I think it was me who left. Uh, we had that. This was early on in Palo Valley's sponsorship with us. And so they had shipped us like, and they knew we loved the beef sticks. So we had probably 40 pounds in this, one of those big giant Costco bags of beef sticks. Yeah, just tons. And I had just left them in the laundry room thinking they'd be fine. But that was close enough proximity for him to probably smell it. Mm -hmm. and motivate him enough to break in the door and get in. And it was so much, this, this is how much beef sticks we had. That's why I said it was like 40 pounds. It was a lot. Maybe not. That may be a little bit of an exaggeration, but enough that he didn't even finish it. He all. left it. Yeah, he left some of it. Like he ate half and was like probably full and then and then left. So happy. Just yeah. a happy bear. Uh, yeah. But you know, that was a, that was a, I tell you what, I was scared because I thought he was still in the house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The fact that the door was still open, it looked like that hadn't been there very long. I didn't know. Are you like... I think you might have told us, but are you like opening doors? Oh yeah, no. I remember like you know our first when you first get in the kitchen, we had that the, the, the stairwell and that one wing, and I'm I'm going up that like <laughs> half, <laughs> like half ready to you sprint might be around the corner. Because here's like and everyone's, and you got to oh, make noise. You like, I'm not afraid of I'm not afraid of a black bear. I've been grew up around it in the country and stuff like that. Because they're they're afraid of us, but that's not what I'm thinking. But he's trapped in exactly, there. Yeah. and that's what I was trying to explain yeah, in a to one someone. One fight, you're not going to do. And well. it's not even a fight. It's just that he would he <laughs> would be just as scared. Way out. Yes, ah. he would be so scared trying to get out the yeah. house too, and I'm the one that's between him and yeah. the door, and so yeah. that's the fear. It's not he's going to come eat me and take care of me. It's like no, I'm in the way of him getting out. How can I get out of that way as fast as I can? So yeah, no, I was scared to death as I was going up the stairwell and looking around the corner. And I'm like peeking because I'm hoping if I see him, I can get out yeah. before he sees me. And all he did was leave a poop. Yeah. yeah. Would it have been more scary if you encountered the bear or like a guy licking the uh, peanut butter things? <laughs> I would definitely be more afraid of, of, the, of the bear, for sure. For sure. That would be really weird to see some That's what I'm <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Long tongue. I don't yeah. know. I, yeah. That would freak me out yeah. a little more. You know, I wonder if it was the same, because then wasn't it like shortly after? Well, then after they had the that golf tournament. Uh, uh, and there was a bear filmed while yes. the, the tour we was saw going him on, on TV running across the field by where we're at. So they say that that's got to be the bear. Yeah. So it was a big bear. To, the, they say that once a bear scores, he'll, he'll keep coming well, he back. He did come back. Remember he, he came did. and took our garbage. Yeah. 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 Times. yeah. He came back on. I, it happened to me. It's happened to me three times that we've, I've, I've been seen. There. Yeah. Three I times. pulled up and, and there was like a three bears. Another time. time we were inside the house and the girls, Janet and Katrina cool. were outside and a uh, neighbor is, is, is driving by and Janet's like, they're getting the kids ready and they're getting ready to go out. Something like that. And the neighbor stops out on the street and yells at us at our house. and says, uh, bear and turns around and it's like 10 feet from Janet, like right there. She didn't even see it. It was like right, right next to her. And then the other time I was taking the trash out. I just cooked up like probably eight or nine pounds of uh, short ribs. And I was, you know, I was cooking and prepping for everybody and serving everybody. And those short ribs are those ones that cook really fast. So it's like five minutes on the grill and then you're yeah. serving it. And so as I'm like serving it, I'm also taking the bones left over and I'm throwing in the trash. And I was like on my second or third trip back there. And I open up our, our trash door and the thing's wide open. And it's like... Mm -hmm everywhere all over the all over the yard and everything and so while i between the times of me going back there he got in there and ripped through all that yeah the, so uh i think this is why they're not 
uh, aggressive is because they were prey, right? When grizzlies were native to California, grizzlies would eat black bears and hunt them. So they're prey. They, that's why they're scared. Hmm. Is that correct? I don't know if that's the, is that true? I, I think know. that's if I'm if I'm not mistaken, we went to I know Yosemite. We did have grizzlies at one point. Yeah, grizzlies are different. Yeah. Like if we if uh, it was a grizzly, yeah. no, yeah. they'll the eat you. Yeah. yeah, you know, or a, definitely. A but I've bear. never actually heard that as the theory of why. I didn't know that. Make I mean, it makes logi- that's what the, it think, makes logical sense. Yeah, when we were at uh, Yosemite, they explained it to us. That yeah. or is it more so that like just I mean, in general, most animals are even the ones that attack you. It's out of fear normally. Normally, they are afraid. Well, no, it depends if it's a if it's an apex predator. Or, yeah, or not. If it's or like a, if you're near a polar, if you see polar a polar bear, bear sure. he's probably yeah, hunting. But that, okay, so that's my point. So that's an example, great example. The, but that's for a read. Like that sucker is looking for food 24 7 because it's yeah, he rarely. Needs it. He's he needs also it. a hyper carnivore. Yeah. They hunt, kill. Well, they, they, because they, they have to. They're, they're limited to it. So like everything is an opportunity for food. Well, you know? I know in Alaska where they have grizzlies and in other areas, like people, there's neighbor. Like, this is a really interesting. I've never even heard of that. Black, black bears bear. are typically aware of people and don't want to interact with them. They're not territorial, blah, blah, blah. If a bear starts... Okay, but why are black bears not dangerous or aggressive? I almost, I'm almost i almost positive it was because... They I mean, were it's, a logi- it's a logical... They were scared of grizzlies. It's a very logical theory. Yeah. I mean, I could get behind that, but yeah. I've never heard that. No yeah. one's ever told me that before. Yeah, I got a thing for bears, dude. They scare shit out of me. I told, when I got chased when I was a kid by a bear, that's it. After that, All now right. if I see bears, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, get me out of here, dude. Yeah, they, I, I don't... I, you know, it's funny. I'm more afraid of like spiders, like little little things like that that I can't see. Bear? Yeah. Yes, yes. If if you put me, okay, if you put me somewhere in the vicinity. Oh, of- here we go. I'm right. Apex predator known to kill or eat black bears. That's it. So they they basically are they were prey. So they're used to running. That's what they do. Absolutely. That's that's what they did. Mm-hmm. To kill like, yep. areas where two because like, way that, back in wait, the day wait, it was that, a short. You're using that there, as your right? support. To, that that's the reason. That's as close as I could get. I was going to say thanks, Doug, for helping him. But I mean, that wasn't like the that doesn't that's, confirm. I don't know. That's what the Yosemite Ranger said. Did, oh, really? Yeah, that's where I think I heard it. You think you heard it? I, you know why I keep saying this? Because my because my, I've been caught a couple times being wrong. I want to be careful when I'm super like for sure. Yeah. But I'm almost positive somebody will yeah. send. Me I some feel messages. like I almost brought up the, the Mariana's Trench had like new sea creatures they found. Did they? No, it's AI. Oh, I was so mad, dude! Yeah. I shared with you this morning something that was fake. That I'm so like, God, you can't trust anything no, anymore. You can't. We're really close. I feel like to like all this internet shit being obsolete because nothing's true. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's like we came this far with all of it. It came so far, and then now it's just now like, we can fake things so well yeah. that like. Dude, speaking of internet and social media, did you guys see the letter that Zuck put out? Is, is that, that real? Out? That's real. Did you did you fact check? I, yeah, no. It's, apparently, it's been it's everywhere. Yeah, and he's saying essentially that the Biden administration pressured them to censor mm-hmm. heavily during uh, COVID, and they did, and also censor the Hunter Biden story. They told them, "Oh, it's 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 disinformation or what are misinformation," and he regrets it. And that they they'll, they'll act differently. You know, so. I was trying to explain. This is a big deal. It's, it's, a, big, big, it's that's a big, big deal. That's a big because, black eye. Uh, one of the arguments was, and they denied it, but now it's obviously true. Is that because the government the government cannot censor speech? It's a, it's a, it's an amendment. It's one of the strongest protections we have when it comes to our rights. And most Americans are are in, in favor of this. But what they did is they were able to censor speech by going around the back door. And pressuring private companies because private companies can censor whatever the hell they want because yeah, right. it's their platform. They're running it through a private business, and that's what they did. Yeah, that's exactly what they did. Was, and Zuckerberg came out around. and admitted it. Yeah, you know, uh, Katrina, I was sharing that with her when you sent that over last night, and she's like, "That's so crazy that he would even do that in the first place." And I was trying to explain to her, like, could you imagine you being in that situation in defense of Zuckerberg? The FBI calls you and tells you that they're yeah. concerned about X, Y, and Z. You and need to help us. You're withholding like ways for them yeah. to, to track down these terrorists. Yeah, your or something, first you your know, first like, inclination of the FBI actually contacts you like that is not like I bet they're trying to manipulate the election. It's like oh shit, like I uh, okay, I'll comply. Yep, you know? yep, yep. And everybody tries to act like they wouldn't comply. It's like I don't know. Would you really like if FBI called you and made the case that this is for the protection of whatever reason, it's like national security? Yeah, and I mean you warn you of yeah. the repercussions it's real of- easy for us to sit on this side and be like oh i can't believe that how would you but it's like uh i don't know i think again i think there's a situation where somebody and that kind of power and authority calls you up and tells you it's they're trying to protect our country we need you to do this because yeah, if you do the wrong thing this many people will get yeah, hurt could die and, or-, or you could be held liable or you know whatever 
Yeah, I mean, it's a tough position. I, I, I hope yeah, now, I, in hindsight, though, these companies now I give them the finger. I think he was just, like, feeling out the momentum right now and the shift, uh, you know, in terms of, like, Dude, this you know, no, opportunity for him no, to come what, out with that. Maybe. No, this is what I think. I think is, I said this last year when we were when we were talking about him or whatever year it was when we were talking about all this stuff, is th what was so strange to me was how we were painting all these people in corners of left and right. And most all these internet dudes like this, uh, the Jack Dorsey's, the Zuckerberg's, the Elon. Yeah, they're about free speech. They're most libertarian type of guys. Yeah. Most of them are very much so pro free speech, even though that wasn't what happened. So I, to me, I always kind of thought that I was just like, there's got to be something more going on. There's more context. Yes, that's true. The origins of these internet companies are the kind of these libertarian, anarchist, free internet. You know, let the public decide type of deal. But they're based out of. Uh, typically California, yeah. uh, which is very liberal. State. Many of their employees are not, don't share the same views. Many of their employees are have very that's, strong yeah, that's opinions sideways. in one direction. So you have pressure from the bottom, your employees, you have pressure from the government. Right. So you're like, okay, I got all my staff saying this is, you know, uh, you know, bad, this is oppressive towards me or violence towards me, this kind of speech. Then the government's like, you better do this or, or right. else. Right. Imagine being in that, that situation. Yeah. Like yeah. you can, I mean, it's so easy for everyone else on the outside to always, you know, point it's and, tough. and this criticize. Is why, it's this like, is why, like him or not, Musk is a special individual. Yeah. Right, because he has Super the Super principled about it. He, yeah. they, the harder they mess with them, the more he gives them the finger. Yeah. And that's, that's a It's unique, unbelievable. And yeah. I don't mean necessarily good or bad special. I mean, I tend to side with what he does, but I think he's special in the sense that it's rare yep. to not fold under that kind of pressure and propaganda campaigns. Oh, they, they go after him like in ways that are just remarkable. I to mean, me. what does that say about my character versus like so initially like i like i don't i can't stand by everything that elon i don't know the guy yeah. i don't know his personal character but my gut when i when someone's like that i tend to like like you like i just i i'm gonna lean more towards that i know why. whether we agree so much on everything else like it's like that to, being principled like that i know why it's because you, you you know what you're gonna get you feel like you know versus i don't know you know what I mean? Like yeah. it better. What's the what's the what's the? Because then there's the other side. What like what kind of person is that that right away like do, just uh, hates him because of those reasons? Like because mm -hmm. oh he's not a rule follower. Oh he's this he's this person. It's he's fixed birth versus growth mindset. I, I feel like. I mean, I like to c compliment myself like that and think it's those. Are, the, the, that's no, the I'm reason. talking about them. Yeah, the, he's not the people you're highlighting. Not no, you. I know, but I'm the I'm the opposite <laughs> side. That would be growth minded. So it is a compliment in a sense. Still, like it's just. But what All does right. it say about he's all handsome? Yeah, yeah. Kind of people, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Exactly. I don't know. I just like I, I've always. So I also, you know, someone swears a lot like that. Like that doesn't. I, I like, I, I don't know. I feel like there's a, a bit of authenticity or something about that person. And so I gravitate to a person yeah. towards a person more like that than the person who's like so proper and, and polished. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm kind of like that too. I think in, in many ways, but I mean, I tell you what, this is a We're weird time. A little rebellious. This is a weird know? time. You have um, a Kennedy supporting the, the Republic Republican yeah. candidate well, for president. Went, you have Tulsi Gabbard, dude. who was a lifelong Democrat supporting a Republican uh, for president. And now you have Zuckerberg coming out and saying this. It wasn't this an accident crazy. that that happened. I mean, he went to the Democratic Party and was looking for, for help and, you know, to con contribute. And they shut him out. You know, it's, it's not like a mystery. Oh, he, the RFK? Yeah, yeah, it's not a mystery why he went over to the other side of the fence to try and implement these other policies he wanted to, you know. He actually, like, thought of it as, like, well, how can – how can I, you know, implement these things for, for our health and, and really investigate these things? You know, I'm going to go to the party that's willing to listen to what I have to say and implement my ideas. And it's like, it's for people to think that he's just like, you know, abandoning like this whole, like they shut him out. It's yeah. simple as that. Yeah. It's just wild though, because he's a Kennedy. That's like, it doesn't get more, yeah, but he's more Democrat royalty than that. Of course. That's that, like, that's got to hurt. You know, like you got to assess that. That's Why so, did he do that? What a weird time. You know, speaking time. of climbing over the fence, Justin, with that, have you guys seen the app Simp Swimply? Mm. This you told us about a while ago. I did. So, and Jerry was sharing with me this morning. So explain the app. So, first. okay. So basically it's like a um, Uber. I guess you would say, I know everyone uses that analogy. It's the Uber of this. It's the, you know, Uber of pools. Like, 
how many people have either summer homes or a house with a pool and they don't, I mean, how many people don't even use their pool that much? And so you can basically with like time blocks, rent out your pool. So someone could wow. pay uh, a fee to you and they can come use your pool for three hours. Yes. It's brilliant. Great idea. It's a brilliant idea. The next level to this now is plunge is doing it uh, with the cold plunges. Huh. So if you don't go out and buy a, an actual plunge for yourself and or maybe you want to see if you'll even use it consistently, you can use them on the app and go use people's uh, cold plunges. So you could go to someone's, find somebody around you that has a plunge. That's yep. interesting. I smell an br interesting business idea. Really? I mean, I'm kind of like, I like mean, I know can, I know, Doug's really protective about having yeah, strangers coming in here. It's the comfortability But there's part a bit a of little... me that's like, okay, let's be honest. How often is that plunge getting used? Yeah. yeah. You know? And even when you do use it, it's only four minutes that you use it. Yeah. Right. I mean, we're going to have at least, there. at least 10 do people you, a day. Do you know how much the these recovery centers that are popping up charge to let you go uh, in and yeah. use yes. a sauna, a plunge and stuff like that? It's like, it's like 50 bucks a visit totally. for some of these places. Imagine if you set one up in your backyard, you have a pool, you have a cold plunge and a sauna, and you could literally create a business and people could pay to come use your... I mean, listen, if you are That's in, a great idea. If you're in a good area, it's a, it's a brilliant idea. It's a, it's a brilliant idea. Yeah, are they getting that popular? Is cold plunging getting that popular? Oh my popular? God, it's, so, it's, all, it's all you hear. I, I feel like plunge, cold plunging is so popular, it's mainstream now. Yeah. Like it was, uh, it was uh, trendy in the fitness space just a couple of years ago. And it's been around forever, but I mean, it's become trendy yeah. again in the, in, you know, thanks Huberman or whatever for like making it more, but now it's like general population. Like I get friends and family that don't even work out that are like, oh, I was thinking about getting a cold plunge. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's definitely made its way to mainstream. It's got a long history in certain cultures. I've long. I've this before. Super long. Yeah, I mean, Lots of cultures. When have, you see a practice like that, that's got a long history, there's, there's, there's some serious value because it's stood the test of time. So why do they do this? You know, why do they do this in... I've shown you guys videos of these schools in Russia mm -hmm. where the little kids go outside in the snow. Throw them out there. Suit, yeah, the bathing suit. Dump them cold <laughs> water on them. Snow angels. Little like, ass kids. Yeah, there's yeah. The, the polar bear clubs. There's yeah. where, where, where were we? Was it London where we were at? Where there's like a, a swim area where they, they every year in the wintertime they all go. Mm -hmm. There's like, there's a lot of cultures that have done this for a, a, a very long time. And I really think, I mean, you got to credit probably Wim Hof for making for it. For sure it was him. Like Wim Hof. He made it like a thing that people understood. Yes. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. yeah. I think Wim Hof is the one that has made it really, really popular. And then maybe, maybe Huberman is the one that mm -hmm. got it like the, the, the next bit of, of. Well, he, he, he kind of was able to uh, show everybody like the potential of like how you could kind of tap into your autonomic system and, and, you know, really have sort of control over a lot of, uh, parts of human physiology you didn't think you did. And so it's like he could do all these feats, uh, which then that's what's going to grab our attention. And then he kind of brings it back to like, well, here's the practices that, you know, uh, you know you're going to benefit from a lot through breathing and through these cold exposures. Do you guys remember the study, the study that him and all his students did where they injected yeah. them with like a salmonella? Is that what yeah. it was? Do not repeat at home. Dude, that no. was gnarly. They were able to, he was able to fight off somehow him and, him and his students. And, and then he had that, students that's why it was interesting because his teachings, uh, you know, proved themselves through other students. To me, that was like one of the craziest that's things. That's so ever. crazy to me. Yes. And I think it was like, I, I wish I could do, do you know what I mean? I'm getting sick. No, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how much is that to highlight, though, the power of the mind, right? A lot. Well, I mean, there's a lot of systems in your body that are automatic. But his argument is you can you can have influence over him. You can have them. influence, yeah. I mean, and, and look, is it's breathing. an argument. It's a fact. Yeah. I, I agree. I think it requires training. Like if you it study, does. not study, if you look at people who can hold their breath for ridiculous amounts of time, how slow they can get their heart rate. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy how slow the heart rate gets wow. while they they're holding their breath. They can get calm like on a... On a dime. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. wild. Did you guys ever watch that documentary? I think I told you guys about the one with the, the, with the deep divers. Called, I never watched uh, it. The, the, what are free they called? Dive? Free diver. Yeah. Mm. Free diver. That was a really good one. If you guys yeah. ever watched that. that was really There's, have you guys ever seen um, the deepest pool in the world that, well, they test uh, divers or they train uh, uh, military divers? It's an actual like man-made pool? It's the pool? deepest man-made pool in the world. No. And when you see a diver, I saw a camera in the water showing this guy. Uh, what's the what's the term agoraphobia? I think it is oh, the, the fear of large spaces. Large, yeah. Ooh, I almost feel like I'd get that in there. 
Like if you look at the video of the guy going down, it's like so big and so deep and you look up and there's all this water around you. Yeah. Crazy looking. That's gnarly. Yeah. Crazy looking. Yeah, no, I would You're you you were a good you were a big swimmer. What's well, the was, deepest you ever That's a good question. I don't think I've ever so we used to in the lake, right? So like a like a popular thing that we would do. So is, you can go down deepest? So yeah, so we we this would be like at like midday we had parked the boat between wakeboarding and stuff. And uh, we'd anchor down somewhere and we had like those depth finders. So we'd, we'd find like a, an area that was challenging, like 20 plus feet deep or whatever like that. And then guys would, we'd jump out the boat and you had to bring back a handful of, of the seaweed or the dirt and mud oh, wow. to prove that you did it. And we challenged to see how far. Now, I don't ever remember being able to measure and like come back and say, I've, I've done this. It was never crazy. It was not anything. What, <laughs> like any 10 these, feet or something like that. Well, no, it was more than that. It was like okay. 20. So yeah. I think, wow. Oh yeah. Yeah. We've been, I've been down 20 feet. That's yeah. gnarly. Yeah. I mean, I guess I get for, but that's nothing for me. To, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, they make pools that are 14, yeah. you know, they make, yeah. So I, you, I'm sure you've probably been to a bottom of a pool like that. Or, yeah. You know, not at 14. I mean, yeah. The yeah, they have, yeah they have where high dives are at. Those pools, I think have to be, yeah, I've done those. 14 feet or 20 feet. Maybe not 20 no, feet. No, not 14, 20, dude. I think 14 feet. Really? Yeah, where a high dive is at, wherever a high dive is at, you can't have it in like a, a regular nine-foot pool. Mm -hmm. It's got to be. Speaking of water, uh, I, is, I've been waiting for Justin to bring this up, so I'm going to bring it up, Justin. No. Because I, I want you to talk about I don't know what's going on here. Would, what's up with the python in the toilet story? What is this? So there was a video, and uh, again, like I was – hesitant to bring it up just because i don't know like how factual but because they showed the the actual snake and the python was in the toilet bowl it was outside and it was like hanging on to this guy's leg uh but apparently he was and he was like choking the thing out and it was like trying to bite him and everything what? but he he claims that he he was he was sitting on the toilet and his it literally just bit his nuts like your worst nightmare of, of that's, situations. That's a happen real, in that's real a life. real fear of mine. Like a real fear of mine. <laughs> like up, up through the bowl. You sit down and like, you, that a crosses real fear your of mind. mine when I was a kid oh, when you're was kid. that either a spider or something. Cause you're sitting, you know, it's yeah. going to come up and get you. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know what? Mine's always my, my, uh, my feet so on the creepy. ground in the dark. Like there's going to be like something that crawls that over touches my touches your feet. Yeah. Like a spider. Not the bowl. Yeah. No, the That's bowl. That's the most vulnerable. Your I, feet are I, fine, I don't, I don't even, I don't even, yours. I can't you even imagine there, something yeah. coming up the bowl. It's something like in the dark, like crawling over my feet, you know? No, oh, man. Hey. And like right for like the sack. Like, come on. That's, oh. that's not good. Is that possible? Is that po a python gets in like that? Yeah. And really? Yeah. They can get stuck in the sewage. The, and that's happened like where someone's. Yes. Yeah. 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 They, they, they swim through there. Yes. I did not know that. I've never I saw heard a of video. A situation like it that. was a nanny cam. It was a mom. I don't know where she was, Thailand or somewhere like that. And she was in a <laughs> in a hammock. Yeah. In a house inside, like the house though, but the door was open, and she was, uh, you know, sitting with her baby. And you can see on the nanny cam a big ass python comes in the door, and she doesn't see it because her back is facing it. And then it comes up, and then she turns around and sees it, and like takes off. Oh. Move. Yeah. That's not a place to live. No. Oh, if there's yeah. snakes like Get that out of there in your neighborhood, yeah, move immediately. That and the you ever see there's this one place. I don't know if this is in New Zealand or Australia or whatever, but um, where spiders sometimes they have like a this thing. It's got to be spring where they're like you know they're emerging. They just had all these babies and uh, there's just spider webs almost hanging oh, everywhere. Yeah. And it's just yeah. like you just see like. Millions of spiders yeah. just take Ooh, over. Yeah. yeah, and it's just it like is, it is. That's why I won't go there. We've shared that clip before. I think. Oh my! It's a time of year, right? The, I feel like I want to go there so bad. That's my worst nightmare. The bugs and stuff make me not go. I feel the same way too. You know, I mean, all it took was that one person. I think we were in our forum or somewhere. Or they said the big ass ones. That were it like was no. It was that spider was carrying a fucking rat up the wall. <laughs> that, that was enough for me. Like I never want to be anywhere. Yeah. A spider <laughs> carrying a rat. I remember it was carrying the rat up yeah. the wall. It was, it was a, a possum. Is that it what it was? A rat, it was bro. bigger than that. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was something crazy. It was no. some, something that you wouldn't think that it could do. It was no. like horrifying. No, because there's the ones that are like this big, right? That yeah. people will get in their house. Yeah. What do you do? You don't kill that. How do you kill that? What do you do? Yeah, with what are you gonna do? It's gonna like jump on you. But he, I mean, I, I don't even want to know what happens when you kill it. Like, what do you do with that? Open yeah. the door and just be like, <laughs> you shoot it out like a, like a rat or you something. You know? All right, get the gonna, shotgun out, dude. Uh, I mean, what are you uh, pulling up right now, Doug? What is it? Trying to get the snake. Uh, I see video. it on his screen. Did you ever screen, find my pool like, answer? I, I, oh yeah, for how deep? Yeah. It's like 5.8 meters. So you're probably pretty close. 15 around, feet, right there. That's uh, over 15 uh, feet, yeah, right? I don't 20, know what a meter is. Yeah, that's 18 to 20. Yeah, it's the only three, time uh, you, Americans. Three feet and a meter. Only time Americans use a metric system is for drugs. 
Yeah. Is that right? a QP? That's true. You're right. Yeah, QP. They never use it for anything else. No. We have no, yeah. So. yeah. Why is that? Probably because dr- we never adopted market. it. Yeah, I think honestly, <laughs> it was just our own stubborn way. Why? <laughs> we're like, yeah. No. Why, why? Why do we do drugs? Because I think I, we're how, buying how, and how getting from all, from other places in the world. So it's like probably, exotic, huh? A kilo. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> how many pounds? Is that? <laughs> Can I have two point two pounds? Yeah, two point two, please. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. funny. Yeah, I don't know why I've never thought of that. Yeah. Oh, hey, I got to show you guys. I got to share something really cool with you guys that my wife did uh, with my son that I thought was so. Brilliant. So my wife is. I want you to share things that she doesn't that she does that is not brilliant. That's, That's stupid. not brilliant. Yeah, I want to share the that, funny. That won't be on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I've been holding yeah. those yeah. to myself. Yeah. 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 Hey, you shares, all the some, brilliant, shares all the brilliant stuff. Yeah. What are you going to share as well? Where she's like, hey, listen, my wife hey, fucked up. You guys want to hear? Let me tell you what she did. She did. <laughs> yeah, I think we should all do that and see what happens tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how our lives are improved. Wow, yeah. what are you guys doing sleeping in the studio? No, listen, so tired. So she's she's so incredibly intuitive with children and understands how to like work with them, whatever. So she's so good with the kids. So brilliant. So she bought this pillow. It's a, it's an emotions pillow. I told you guys about this and it lists the major emotions. So it's like fear, anger. What does that say? Uh, disgust, sad, happy, and surprise. And then it, it, it breaks off of those. So like, for example, anger, there's critical, distant, frustrated, aggressive, mad, uh, mm-hmm. hateful, threatened, or hurt. And then off of those, there's even more categories. And so what, what he does is he's, you know, he's, he's three and a half. We're about to turn four and he has a big feeling like little kids always do. And he'll get mad, maybe throw a tantrum, run off to his room, get, because he can't watch cartoons or, you know, not getting something he wants or whatever, or he's disappointed. He'll get real upset. And so when he calms down, she's done this thing where she'd be like, get the emotions pillow. Let me know what you're feeling. And you know, little kids, you know, they don't have the words often for some of these things, but it's been working. So she gets it out for him. He had a meltdown because, uh, I forgot what it was. I think we, we limited their TV to 35 minutes a day. So once he uses it up, that's it. And if he uses it up early in the day, we know there's gonna be a challenge at the end of the day when he wants yeah. to w- watch more. So first she co-regulates with them. This is something she taught me. She's like, he's not gonna be able to think straight until you let help him calm down. The way you do that is you, you're calm with him. You hold him, even if he's upset, wait till he comes down. And then he got the big feelings pillow and he came back. Remember, this is my three and a half year old. And he says, so the issue was uh, that he couldn't, I think it was that he couldn't watch, yeah, it couldn't watch TV. So he comes back with it and then he says, mom, I feel, this is remember three and a half year old. I feel sad, disappointed, and powerless. I feel frustrated at you for not letting me watch TV. So it was my kid, my three and a half year old. Now, is that him I'm saying it or is him pointing at the emotion? Saying it. He's saying that? Because she's been using it with him now for at least a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for him, and how accurate is that? Sad, yeah, mm-hmm. okay, yeah. disappointed, yeah, yeah, and powerless. Powerless is that's it. powerless. Yeah, yeah, I have no power because you're taking it yeah, away from me, and frustrated at you with him for not that. letting me watch TV. Yeah, that's oh crazy. my god. Yeah, that's crazy. She sent me it. She she told me all about it, and I've seen him say this stuff. And so this is like, <laughs> I'm just I was brought up so authoritarian style. Uh-huh. And I'm just not. I don't have her in, intuitive, uh, you know, gifts for this kind of stuff. So for me, it's like, and it might. My challenge is when my kid gets upset, like he'll get mad and run off to his room. I'll be like, whatever. When he's, when he'll come back when he's better. He'll work. He'll come out. back when he's hungry. Yeah, he's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's down. He just wants attention, which yeah. is the wrong. I mean, that's like the wrong attitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so she's like, no, no, go with him, co-regulate, help him, yeah. you know, talk about what's going on. So, so really cool. So one of our, I, I shared uh, last year on the podcast that uh, we were going to be holding Max back, right? So school, new new school year just started this week, right? So. Um, or this week or last week, last week. And so we're on week two of it. And, you know, one of the things uh, that why we also made the decision now, because there was like controversy on whether we should or not, like half the people said we should, the other half said we should. We're like, you know, let's do it when he's really young right now. And what I like is that they switch his classroom, his teachers, he'll have different. So he doesn't feel like he's, so he doesn't feel like he's, yeah. Cause that was one of the things too. It was like, I don't want him to feel like he's, you know, inadequate or he's like, he can't, we can't move him on or anything like that. So I was like, okay, well, that's good. He's got all that, that he's got, they're switching everything. So he's, he hasn't connected the difference between kindergarten, first grade, second grade. So we're like, okay, this is like this week, but this is the first week (laughs) he comes home uh, yesterday 
And he's like all excited. Daddy, daddy, I knew what the super kid was before they even. <laughs> so the, every month they, they have like these super kids that the that they, they teach with it. They use a, a, a super kid and they teach them a name and then the kids into all these things. And my and they, they did it. And of, of course, they follow the same curriculum as what they did last year. So he knew what it was right away. He was like so excited. <laughs> I already knew. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good that you knew that already. So now I'm going like, oh, shit, I wonder how quick it or how long. <laughs> It's going to be before he starts to connect. Daddy, I feel like I've done all of this. Already. <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah. we'll see, but we're starting now. So. Is his birthday like, is he one of those birthdays? Yeah. He's young, right? So he's, he's, dis, uh, well, he's, he, he, is, could, he could be either type yes. of deal. Yeah, yeah. 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 So he's, he's in July. It's his birthday, but he just turned five. So he's like at that, eight, that cusp. Where I've we always could, been re told, and maybe this, I don't know if this is good, good, uh, advice, but I've always heard that if you're on the cusp, it's better to put them in a, uh, put them in the lower grade so that they're older for their you know so their my sister and i are, are the exact opposite examples of that so i'm november she's december so we're we're later in the year she we're uh we're only uh 13 months apart in age 13 months but we're two grades apart oh because i went early and she went late, late. Hmm. and so i mean i there's obviously uh i think there's mostly the advantage in her situation now sure you can make the argument that because I was young, a late bloomer, everyone was bigger, more athletic, faster, smarter than me. Like it's it's caused me to try and elevate to keep well, that up. Just paired up with your your mentality. You have a very growth minded uh, mentality. So, well, so I wonder if it was a perfect mix. Maybe yeah. or did that cause that? Did yeah. that create that? Because yeah. my whole life I've been having to try and catch up and grow sure. to be like everybody else. So that's the like the part of the argument is that yeah, good question. You know, the, because know. of that, I you know that caused me to be this growth minded person because I was always trying to catch everybody else. Yeah. And I my maybe my parents did a good job of helping me embrace that instead of making me feel like I wasn't. So I don't know. And then my sister being older, like she's the oldest of her class, and so then and then the argument there is so the reason why they wanted Max to be held back was because he's actually really like. Max Math, he's ahead. Uh, all his skills in in school and education, he's actually there. He's at the level or above, but um, emotionally, he's still like a, like a like he he cries when things are really difficult and challenging. Like he's yeah. that's kind of and so they are more concerned about where he was emotionally right now versus him. Have you and you guys don't have you guys really considered homeschooling? No, because you know one of the arguments I've heard. So I told you guys I used to have clients that were really into this, and I and I learned a lot through them. And one of the one of the ch the advantages they said was with homeschooling, you're not putting all the same age kids. You have older kids, younger kids, because like your son. That's a huge advantage. I yeah, think. yes, because like I've seen your son around little kids. Yeah, yeah. He becomes the older kid. But you, could you very, imagine? Could you guys imagine Mind Pump without Katrina? No, uh, that's why it's not going to no. work. Nah, yeah. no. Yeah. no homeschooling. Yeah. yeah. So I mean. Maybe if she had like a less important role in yeah. what we do, I would be like, sure, honey, gonna, stay home and do that. Yeah. But <laughs> would she want to? No, she no. loves business. Yeah. She loves she it's loves a lot, being a, a part a, of building. It's trying for me. It was not gonna. It's work. a lot of work, yeah. but you can also help. You I mean, she's not shy. I mean, you know, Katrina. She's not shy of work and challenge, sure, and sure. she is incredible, right? And the the role that she is she has played as as mother and everything yeah. like that, like she's unbelievable. Plus, you guys do have an exceptional. You guys found a great place. Yeah, yeah. yeah the school you guys. Yeah. Found so it. and and so, uh, but I, I definitely I I presented that and like I said like, hey, I would love for you to homeschool if you would be down to do it. But she wants, she loves this too much. Yeah. She loves, and I don't, I wouldn't rob that of her, right? So, you know, our way of handling that is private school and resources. Yeah. So we, you know, we spare, when it comes to him, we spare no expense of what we want for his education taken yeah. care of. That's why he's we're, in Kumon. That's why he's out of school like he's at. Yeah, like, we're in the process of, uh, of, of, Finding families with kids that and with everybody wants to homeschool, so we could find groups and work together and and facilitate education through hiring this person. Did you guys person. ever talk to my cousin? Did you guys did, did she, Jessica yeah. and connect? No, no, she is. Okay, she is. I think she's an incredible yes, resource. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, that's Stephanie exactly is. why my wife's talking to her. Yes, yeah, she's is, done a great job. Yeah, Stephanie's incredible. I mean, I and it's her. There's no, there's no like manual, like you know what I mean. I mean, yeah. there's there's information. Okay, don't get me wrong. There's lots of information on. But there's a lot of different strat there's a lot ways. Of mystery. Everybody does a lot of things different yeah. too. Yeah, so, dude. I mean, I it's my cousin who makes me want to homeschool. I'm so impressed with her kids. Yeah. And, and they're a big and they and she's from a family of homeschool. So my my aunt 
homeschooled the five of their kids, and then my cousins now turn around and homeschooled her five yeah. kids. So it's like an example of ten kids that I've watched within just that family alone, and they're just they're amazing. They're all amazing kids. Yeah. They're they're unbelievably brilliant, self-aware, socially very normal. All yeah, the things yeah. that everybody thinks like, you know, oh, they're going to be awkward. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, no, they're not. They're like crazy like presenters. And man, I, we were just at the my cousin's graduation and, you know, the fam there's like 40 people there and she stood up and gave like this speech to the family. Who just did? the Yeah, my cousin who was uh -oh. the, the uh, or what, my, what would that be? My, uh, if it's my cousin's kids, it's my- like second or third cousin. Yeah, second or third cousin. How old were they? Yeah, she's uh, just graduated eighth grade or whatever. Oh, wow, and she's spoken for Oh, everybody? man, just like that's, so oh, that's articulate crazy. and funny and like- That's great. Yeah, just crazy to watch like yeah. the way they can communicate to uh, other adults and they don't, uh, and I can see it in even the youngest one. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's her that would inspire me it's to just, do It's just, it's overwhelming. I wouldn't know what to do. I would have no idea what to do with that because like when you, when you put them in school, they have the curriculum, they have the setup, you pick a good place and, and they do it on your own. It's like wide open, uh, opportunities or challenges or choices. All right, what do I do? So Where do I go? My and then theory, the fear is, Oh, am I going to do this wrong? My theory is this because, because I do agree with you in, in, the, in the values of that is, and I kind of think that we are, we are doing like a blended Katrina and I are very much so, uh, like Max, I mean, sometimes I feel bad. Like sometimes I have to take a break because we school him so much, right? So he goes to a, a private school day. Mm -hmm. Then after that, we have him in Kumon for another hour. And then we do stuff with him afterwards at home. So we do a lot yeah. with him. And we, like, it, so it's like a blend of this education that the, you know, that the school is giving him, then our, what our home values and beliefs are. And then even outside professionals that are assessing where he's at in level. So we you, definitely devote a lot of resources, time to, to really formulating what we think is like the best I environment. Just, I just him. read this article on uh, homeschooling. It's exploding uh, because of the pandemic. So many parents after that are like, I'm going to homeschool, especially with the vaccine requirements that happened in California. My cousins did this. Their kids, uh, because of the new the, the new laws with all these vaccine requirements, and then after what happened with COVID, they were like, hell no. They pulled their kids out and they ended up buying a trailer, like a big, uh, what is it, motor, motor, not a motor home, but a, a trailer. Yeah. Because they, they're gonna homeschool and they're gonna travel around the state and learn different things or whatever. I think that would be totally fun to do something like that. Like, even though I know it's not my style, but I see, I've seen like, like there's families, there's like YouTube channels that are dedicated to like families that do that. Yeah. Where they like travel and like go, like how cool would it be like to teach like your kid history through like showing up to places? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Plus yeah. it's family connection time. Mm -hmm. also. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would be, yeah. cool. I just, I, so, theoretically sounds cool. I would never do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just know I wouldn't have the discipline yep. to do that. And I like, I like this too much yep. to, to just Unless do we that. all travel together. You guys want to get like, a bunch of trailers, it, yeah, yeah, caravans. Just, just, <laughs> just hire a bunch of uh, uh, I don't know, martial arts masters. You know, to do yeah, make little ninjas. Make them all ninjas. We're, so we're about to go do that. I tell you guys. So uh, Katrina went down there, and she's a little worried because she's just like, yeah, I went there and there's like 40 kids, and they're just like running around. And it's loud. It's just that. So we're we're gonna go ease Max in and see if it's, really, yeah, which one Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Yeah, 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 yeah. Over at Gra the Gracie School over by us. Um, oh, awesome. And see if he'll if you he will. I mean, again, I'm in this predicament again where it's like I know the things I want him to do, but I also want to be very careful to not like force him into the kids. So he'll go the other direction. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah, so so it's like he wants to. That, I just I keep I, I you know yeah. I just keep introducing these things yeah, and then it. hoping that eventually something is going to excite him enough to where he wants to do it and then we can do it. I, but I also want to be careful of just because I want that so bad that I don't force him That's, to do that yeah, or right. even make him feel like daddy wants it so yeah, bad that he does it just for so you. he does it just to appease me. Like I really yeah. want him to be. So I'm trying to That's be like great. yeah okay with. You know, that maybe we don't do that yet and we're not into That's it. Awesome. He's still young, you know. So. Uh, do we have a shout out for today? I mean, I could shout out. Uh, <laughs> what do you got? So you guys all know I follow calligraphy. Yes. Yeah, like Japanese or Chinese style calligraphy. And there's this guy, it's called cal uh, calligraphy.jy on Instagram. I love his work. Uh, I actually bought one of his pieces and I have another one coming, custom ordered. So, awesome. Yeah, check it out. He's uh, very talented. Awesome. By now you've heard of the benefits of CBD. It's good for inflammation, can produce feelings of euphoria, might help with sleep, 
Well, there's a company called Ned that makes full-spectrum hemp oil extracts, high in CBD, but also a lot of the other beneficial cannabinoids. In fact, they work better together. They also include the terpenes in the plants, whole plant extracts. It works much, much better. In fact, if you take Ned, you can feel it in about 45 minutes. It's that strong and that effective. Anyway, if you go through our link, you'll get a discount. Go to helloned.com. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump and get 20% off. All right, back to the show. First question is from Cole Rowe. I would love some deeper insight on the stay in a calorie deficit to lose weight and the eat more to lose more statements. I find it confusing. Okay, so, you know, this is a good question. And I think sometimes we forget that it can definitely be confusing, right? Yeah. In order to lose weight, you have to consume less calories than you burn or you burn more calories than you take in. So it's, it's known as an, allerg- an energy imbalance. So if you're taking in 2,000 calories, but you're burning 3,000 calories, where's that extra 1,000 cal- calories coming from? And it's coming from your body, hopefully from body fat. So then how does it make sense when you hear us say you got to eat more to lose more? Well, it's because what you're trying to do is you're trying to affect the burn side of that equation by building muscle and speeding up the metabolism, okay? So if you're burning 2,000 calories a day and you're taking in 2,000 calories a day, there's two ways to create a deficit. One is to take in less calories. The other is to burn more calories. And there's two ways to burn more calories. One is to move more, which is a very short-term approach. Your body adapts very quickly. The second, more favorable approach, is to teach your body to burn more calories on its own. And the most effective way to do that is to build muscle, strength train, and then fuel that muscle growth with additional food, calories, protein, et cetera. So that's why we say that. It's 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 an attempt, and if you do it right, often successful attempt at speeding up the metabolism. I mean, both statements are are true, right? Um, And I think that we can agree that almost all, if not all clients, when they are trying to lose body fat, and they have a significant amount, 10 pounds or more they, they need to lose. When they first start, it is almost always, if not always, in their best interest to focus first on eating more and building muscle, to then ramp up their metabolism so that when they do go to the deficit- Where they cut the calories. Where they cut the calories, it's coming from a much higher place because most everybody that comes to us- Many times have tried to like, we don't ever get, I, ne- I don't know if I can ever recall getting a person who showed up to buy a personal training and they're like, Hey, I've never tried to diet and I've never tried to work out before. I'd like to hire you and do it right. Most people have tried it on their own and tried it for years on their own. And they've yo-yo extreme dieted, cut, tried all these things. And we get a hold of these people in a, uh, in a place where they are not in a, a good place metabolically, meaning they have already cut and added, cut and added for so long that their body is adapted to this low calorie intake and they're coming and they're like, hey, Adam, I want to lose weight. And they're already in this like 1,500 to 2,000 kind of calorie range. Eating less is just way too low. Yeah, and eating less would would inevitably get them to lose a few pounds, but then the plateau hits and now I have nowhere to go as a trainer. I can't go any lower because I'm already in an unhealthy place calorie-wise. Versus when I first get them, and I and I and it's just hard to communicate. Like, you know, hey, Adam, I want to lose 30 pounds. I go, okay, Steve, this is what we're gonna do first. I'm gonna actually increase your calories or keep you at maintenance, and we're gonna build muscle right now. We're not gonna lose yet. And they go, Well, I'm hiring you to lose weight. Well, I'm we will. But I promise you, if we do it this way- The setup is everything. It, it, it'll be much more- it, 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 and, and if I do it really good, over time, I increase their calories and build muscle so that when I cut their calories, it's actually at a, a point where it's the same or higher than what they were when they came in trying to lose weight. By the way, this sounds like magic, but it, but we've done it so, so many times. I've gotten So many times I've gotten a client <clears throat> at the end of a weight loss journey, if we did it right, where they're eating the same or more than they were when they started. Versus what most people experience, which is they lose weight and they're at such low calories uh, after their weight loss journey and doing so much activity that it's unsustainable. Mm-hmm. We eat 1,200 calories. This is why you go on a weekend and you go out with your friends yeah. and come back and you gain so much weight. Yeah. Because your, your metabolic rate was so slow. Just the dessert will kind of tip you over the edge. That's right. And it's, uh, it's not a flexible place to be. Look, let me put it differently. If I could snap my fingers and give everybody a fast metabolism, we would solve 
the obesity epidemic overnight. Yeah. If I could just do this and everybody's metabolism gets faster. Unfortunately, I can't do that. But there are predictable ways of encouraging that to happen. And the best is to build muscle. Building muscle, the process of building muscle, the signaling that it does, the, the fact that you're stronger, the high protein diet that, that fuels that t re re tends to result in a metabolism that burns more calories on its own. So now it's easier to put yourself in a calorie deficit. That's Th it. This would be different if that example of Steve or anybody else coming to us that need to lose weight was at the starting point at 4,000 calories. Well, then if Steve was eating 4,000 calories, and I go, okay, Steve, we're just going to eat 3,000 calories now, make some better food choices and train, and you're going to you're gonna lose the weight. But that's not where people are. Mm -hmm. Most everybody is at a place where they don't feel like they're eating a lot. Now, granted, they probably have days where they know they don't eat very well, but typically they've, they've gotten to a place where their metabolism has really slowed down. And what we need to do first is to build the metabolism, ramp it up first, so that when we do cut calories, they're in a more sustainable place. Because Steve's loves Twinkies. <laughs> Next question is from Silly Peep. What are some great ways to help clients start a reverse diet? Great, great follow-up great follow question. <laughs> um, the best most successful approach I've ever had is I explain to them the process of reverse dieting, why we're doing it. But then I take their focus off the scale and I place it squarely on performance. We're going to try and get you stronger. And everybody likes to get stronger. Anybody, anybody that's ever hired me, whether they want to lose weight, look better, whatever the goal is, everybody likes the feeling of getting stronger. They just do. When you get, when you go and you try and exercise and you added 10 pounds to the bar, you could do three more reps of a particular exercise, it's empowering. And so what I try to do is get them to focus on strength. So we're not going to weigh you. We're not going to look at uh, any, any you know, physical metrics that we can measure except for strength. Right now, I just want you to get stronger. And if you're getting stronger, then the high odds are we're moving in the right direction with your metabolism. And then I get them focused on that and I track it and I show them. Last week you did this, this week you did that. Wow, you're hitting a new PR on this lift. You're hitting a new PR on that lift. And then the client starts to get really into it. Like, Ooh, I want to see how much I could deadlift. Let me see what my squat looks like. Me, and then the reverse diet's much easier because then they see the benefits of increasing their calories, increasing the protein intake as reflected by the strength gains in the gym. That's the best approach because if you keep the focus on the scale, they're going to be yeah. constantly disappointed. You got to pin it to the performance. Yes. Yes. Yeah, there, there's also this strategy and I've done this before where I actually don't even tell the client they are reverse dieting. You just say, eat, eat this. I just make them go <laughs> after the protein. Because I don't think I've ever met somebody who's trying to lose weight and has a slow metabolism and is eating enough protein. No. It, they're almost yeah. always, no. they're, if anything, they're over-consuming. It's like double your portion of what you're already doing. Yeah, right? yeah. so I literally just put the, I explained to them how crucial protein is to building muscle. And if and I always explain to them that, listen, I bet when you lose this fat that you want to get off, because a lot of times they're very focused on that. Oh, I want, I'm so fat. They say, oh, I want to lose 50 pounds of body fat. And I say, well, you, want, you don't want it to be flabby and loose and you want to be firm and tight and muscular. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, well, if we do want that, then it's, paramount that we get enough proteins because we need the building blocks in order to build the muscle. Yeah. So I put just all the focus on they need these nutrients in order to be able to reap the benefits from all the weight training we're going to do. So I don't actually sometimes tell them that it's I'm because sometimes that'll freak somebody out. If you have somebody who is uh, deathly afraid to eat more because their whole life, if they ever ate a little more, they felt like they got quote unquote fat. So then I'll just tell them, like, oh, man, well, you know, part of why we're having a hard time is you don't get enough protein intake. You are, we're eating too much carbohydrates and saturated fats, not enough of healthy proteins. So all I want you to focus on. So it's sometimes just the reverse diet looks like me focusing on going after protein and then tracking metrics like strength and how you feel oh. and inches and stuff like that. Hey, real quick, sorry to interrupt you. Look, we have a sale this month on some programs. We have a beginner program, Map Starter. It's 50% off. Then we have a bundle. That's different. It's called the Starter Bundle. That includes our most popular programs. That's also 50% off. So if you're interested in that, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Next question is from Eden Doesn't Sleep. Mm. Thoughts on MK677? This is, is that peptide? a peptide. Mm. Uh, to that or a new wrapper. Also, yeah. <laughs> also known as... Ibutamorin. So oh, it's, that's I, I didn't know that was ibutamorin. Yeah, it's ibutamorin. Um, and and this is uh, it's not a SARM. Great so for bulking. 
it's not a selective androgen receptor modulator, uh, modulator so it, it doesn't attach to the androgen receptor, so it's not a replacement for steroids or testosterone. I've seen people say that about it. Oh, it's a SARM. It's not a SARM. It's a peptide. It's a ghrelin mimic. So the body responds to MK677 uh, or ibutamorin as if your ghrelin was much higher. Now, the what happens when ghrelin goes up, growth hormone goes up. So ibutamorin and MK677 are growth hormone producing peptides. I've used this. I've used this many, many times. And uh, a couple points on it. Number one, the IGF-1 results from this. So whenever you want your, when your growth hormone goes up, what you're really measuring is your IGF-1. And, and you want the IGF-1 to go in more of a youthful level. So when people do growth hormone, human growth hormone uh, treatment, um, like longevity clinics will do this. What they're doing is they're saying, okay, your growth, your IGF-1 is at this number. We want to bring it up here where it would be in your 20s. And, and when you bring up IGF-1, you notice these kind of youth effects, these cosmetic effects, skin, hair, you get some fat loss, you get a little bit of muscle gain. Um, so people tend to want to go after this, right? But human growth hormone is expensive. It's harder to get. It's more controlled. Ibutamorin, uh, easier to get, and it raises IGF-1. I saw um, a study where they were comparing it to actual growth hormone. And in the study, it's like equivalent to taking like two IUs. Of, of human growth hormone, which is what a longevity clinic would, would recommend. If, yeah. if you went to a longevity clinic, they would put you on one or two IUs of growth hormone. So it's really raises hmm. IGF-1. Here's the other side of it, though. You said it, Adam. It's good for bulking because appetite makes you hungry. I was so hungry. The two it biggest makes you thing, eat a lot. Two biggest things I noticed from it when I took it, that, and I loved this about it, was because uh, I was always somebody who struggled with getting enough calories to bulk, was the increased appetite and the sleep. I slept like a baby yeah, on that. Yeah. I, the sleep, I noticed a big difference on the sleep, and I noticed a big difference on the appetite. Yeah. That was the big thing. But I see, so a lot of times noticed. people want to raise growth hormone because they want to get leaner. This probably isn't the right no, one I because the appetite that. increased. This is a bulking peptide. Like I gained a predictable seven to eight there's pounds. There's another one, Sal, yes. that's, that is, doesn't do that. Tessa with, Maryland. Okay, Tessa Maryland. Yeah, there's say. Tessa so, Maryland. There's a couple so that, others. Wouldn't that be a, a, a generic way to say that, right? If you were looking to use it to lean out, Tessa Maryland would probably be yes. a better strategy. Ibutamorin bulking. Well, Ibutamorin for a bulk. Yes, and there the pumps go. on Ibutamorin are just uh, ridiculous. If you want to bulk, this would be the one to use. I, I, I want to be very clear, though. Uh, it doesn't compare to proper exercise, diet, and sleep. So for the people looking for shortcuts, if there's a you know 15-year-old or 25-year-old version of me listening to this, you're probably going to ignore what I'm about to say. But it's, mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's, it pales in comparison uh, to proper diet, sleep, um, and exercise. Yeah, and or TRT. Like a lot of people yeah, if your will, testosterone's low. A lot of yeah. people hear growth hormone stuff, and they think like, oh, this is going like, to be like testosterone. Nope. And, yeah, no. No, no, no. No. Next question is from the Fit Life Lawyer. You all talk about leading by example is the best way to teach your kids about healthy eating. How do you go about this when co-parenting in separate households if the other parent doesn't pri prioritize healthy eating? This, this is only for Sal right is, here. Just yeah, 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 divorced our team, wives, yeah. Not, yeah, you guys are still good? So, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> no, please, God. Uh, yeah, this is hard, man. When I looked at the data on co-parenting it's the some of it's pretty dismal it's like if you're a really you know good parent one way and the other parent's really bad parents like 50 percent of our life is still with that other parent yeah so the best you could hope for is you live a particular way in your life and then the child has this contrast and this choice and at some point they get older and then they see the value in how they lived when they came to your house versus when they went to the other person's house otherwise uh, you know, co-parenting can be really hard when the other parent just disagrees. And what you don't want, it's more detrimental to have a shitty relationship with the other parent than it is for them to not listen to what you agree with. It's actually better off you get along and then they do things totally. you disagree with. A lot of people treat it the other way. They're, no, no, we're going to do everything exactly the same. And they fight and fight and fight over this thinking we have to do everything the same. And then what's most detrimental to the, to the kids is that their parents, who they both love and identify with, hate each other? Absolutely hate each other. L listen, if you if you believe that your way of parenting is better, then one of the best ways to prove that is to prove it by living it and doing it, yeah. and not worrying about what the other parent is doing. Yep. Yep. I mean, it's the long game. 
And you may think that like, but that kid in 10, 15, 20 something years later down the road. will look at the the parent that made healthy food choices or did whatever behaviors that you are trying to implement that your other par- the other parent is not. And was, kids are smart. And at mm-hmm. that point, they're young adults and they'll be able to look at like, wow, my dad was really strict about the way we ate and exercise and did all these things like that. And I but never underst- I never understood it. When I was seven, and I felt better. And, yeah, you know, but now that it's fast study. forward twenty years later, and I see my talk dad's to, health and his and talk my to mom's. adults who grew up this way, they'll tell yeah. you, "Oh yeah, looking back, you know, yeah, my mom, she did a lot of things right, and it was my dad that would, or, or vice versa." What you don't want to do, though, is create an environment where it's so authoritarian that they don't even consider the health as the, the healthiness of the eating. It's just, gosh, man, when I was at my so and so's house. Like I felt like everything was being watched and it was so stressful. It has to be the way you live. It just, this is just how we live. And then when the kid asks you, Hey, how come we don't have yeah, snacks don't have the, it at our house? Yeah. Why don't we have chips all the time in the cupboard? Like mom's house or dad's house. Like, we just don't eat that way here. You know, when you go to mom's house, you can eat that way, but we just don't eat that way here. And you just make it no big deal. Oh, that sucks. I really want to have it. Yeah. I know. I know it's just different here. And you, you empathize with them. I know it's hard going from one house to another, Different standards, different rules. I can't even imagine. It's super challenging. I totally get it. It's just, this is just the way that we live here. And then you kind of balance it and, and weigh it out. Every once in a while, you include those things so they don't do you, feel so Do you so think different. the parents are, are more challenged because their kid is uh, not, like they're worried about the influence that the other parents do? Or do you think it's more because they feel like they don't get to be the one that the kid loves to be with the more? Do you think oh, that's, that's both. I mean, both. You know how hard it was for me, you know, because we have dual custody still. And uh, the first three to four years, at least, if if not longer, the biggest challenge for me was when they come here, I only see them half the time. I don't want to be the downer. Yeah, you don't want to be the disciplinary. Yeah, owner. like I just want them to enjoy life. These poor kids are, are already going through this and have to move from house to house every other week and whatever. That's very hard. That's a hard thing to deal with, uh, you know, when you love your kids, but... You know, you, they're going to be adults longer than they be kids. I mean, that's a fact. So, you know, you're going to know them for way longer as adults. So you you don't need to be their friend. You have to be their parent. Um, and that's me talking on a podcast. Living, it's much more challenging. But yeah, it's got to be a relaxed environment in that sense. Just the way we live. It's just how we are. It, it, it is very simple the, or, sim, or the similar to how we give advice about like trying to get a family member to buy in to help. Yeah, it. Yeah. The best way is to live the example, yeah. right? Is to... Mm-hmm. Is to do it consistently yourself, and you know, prove your model yeah. in a sense. Yep. You know, prove by by living it and doing it, not by saying it, not by forcing it, not by telling somebody else about it, preaching to them, but by truly living it and being that example. And let me tell you, that is hard enough as it is. Yeah. yeah. So instead of like like diverting your energy towards fighting with the other person or like just bury that energy into being better at what your belief system and your values are and let that, let that be the it's example. Tough. I mean, I dived into a lot of this obviously as I went through it, but you, you, you know, and this is tough by the way, what I'm about to say is really hard for people to hear, but m- most time, not always, most times though, it's better for the kid to have the parents in their life. Even if the parents don't do a damn, don't do a good job. Like if you look at the data, like on fathers, for example, mm-hmm. There's a lot of like shitty dads out there and the moms are just like, it's better for them to be out of my kid's life. Usually not. Usually it's better for the dad, even if he's not great and he's got a lot of bad uh, traits and habits, still better off for the kid to have him in their life than, than to not have him at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the attitude. Minus no. abuse and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, There's right. those extreme cases yeah, like where your child safety and all that but stuff. But like, yeah, yeah. And so that's a hard pill to swallow for a lot of parents because like that, I don't want them to go to that house or that parent, you know, doesn't show up for things and does this and that. Well, back to my point, like you got, we think sometimes that kids are are, are a lot smarter and more observant than you think they Mm -hmm. are. And a lot of times that's all the kid needs is to see this example of a a very bad example on one side and a very good example on the other. And that normally determines the direction they want. see what's working. That's right. Attitude, behavior, everything that transpires as a result of like how you incorporate that eating And And that's, to me, that's how, uh, I mean, I don't ever want to think of me and Katrina having to do this separately, but if there was different things that beliefs on how we want to raise our kid, my way of, you know, winning that argument or 
their debate would not be actually arguing with it's almost her. like is, a marketplace is is yes yeah. is is living it so well that it's obvious to my son that the way dad does things yeah. is much smarter i when i grow up i want to be yes, more like that here not so much here yeah totally all right i know you like that episode if you did check this one out <laughs>